Today on this 2011 Ford F-350 Super Duty, we'll be installing the B&W Custom Underbed Fifth Wheel Installation Kit, part number BWGNRK1111-5W. This kit is designed to work with the B&W Fifth Wheel Companion Hitch, part number BWRVK3500. This can also be used as a gooseneck hitch if needed. Now we'll show you how to install it. We're gonna first need to go ahead and lower down the spare tire and set it out of the way for now. We will be reinstalling this at the end of the installation. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove each of the rear wheels just to give ourselves a little more working room and allow you to see things a little bit better. Next, we're gonna need to mark our bed where we're gonna need to drill our hole now we'll go ahead and take our tape measure and we'll set it over the end of the bed. Now that we've measured from the rear of the bed up to the distance specified in the instructions, gone ahead and put a mark here. Next we're going to need to measure the distance between the wheel wells and find the center point. Now that we have our mark, we'll go ahead and take our pilot bit and we'll drill a pilot hole down through the bed. Next, we'll go ahead and take our hole saw, go ahead and drill our hole out. Now we've come underneath the vehicle, and next we're gonna need to remove this heat shield here from underneath the passenger side. To do that, we're just gonna take a pry bar, slide it up underneath, go ahead and work the heat shield off the underside of the bed, and it will not be reinstalled. Next, we're gonna to need to lower down the exhaust. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and install a safety strap here at the back portion of the exhaust, just to give it a little bit of support once we remove the bracket. Now that our strap is in place, we're gonna to need to remove this exhaust bracket right here. To do that, we'll need to take this bolt out here, as well as the bolt out up there. We'll then use our safety strap to lower the exhaust down a little. Next, we're gonna come over here to the driver's side wheel well, where we're gonna to need to cut a small notch in this lip here to allow the cross members of the gooseneck to fit in place. So we'll measure back as per the instructions. Now to cut this notch out here, you can use either a pair of tin snips or even a rotary tool with the proper cutoff wheel. Next, we're ready to install the cross members. We'll begin with the rear cross member, and the right rear side will have the double notch in it like this. This right here is how it'll be positioned once it's in its final place underneath the bed. Now, we'll be using the notch that we just cut in the driver's side fender well to help us slide the cross members in. Now, when installing this front cross member, over on the passenger side, we have to go up and over the shock mount. Now it may be helpful to use a rubber mallet to help you slide the cross member in just past this shock mount. We also use a pair of pliers to help angle the cross member up enough to clear the edge of the shock bracket. Now on this particular vehicle, the bed was crushed in a little bit, so we needed to use a pry bar and a rubber mallet to help us work the cross member over the shock mount. Now that we have our cross bracket in place, we can go ahead and take a pair of pliers and twist it up into position. Next, we're ready to install the front cross member. When it's in position, it'll be positioned like this underneath the bed. Now that we have our front cross member in place, again, we had to use a rubber mallet and a pry bar on this one because our bed's so bent. 
Go ahead and take our pliers and we'll twist it up into position. Now to make things a little bit easier and so that you're not fighting the exhaust, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove this back section of exhaust. To do that, we're gonna to need to remove the nut here, here, and one right there. Once we have the three nuts removed, we're gonna to need to use a little bit of spray lubricant to remove this rubber exhaust hanger, as well as this one right here. Now we'll go ahead and use a large pry bar to help work the rubber exhaust hangers free. Now it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you raise the center section up into position. You want to make sure that the latch mechanism is on the driver's side. Next, let's go over the hardware that we'll be using to attach the center section to each of the cross members. There'll be a total of six locations. The hardware will be the same for all six locations. We'll be using a half inch by inch and a half hex bolt, we'll using a half inch flat washer, a half inch lock washer, and a half inch hex nut. Go ahead and take the bolt and the flat washer, go through the cross member, and into the center section. We'll then install the lock washer and the hex nut. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other five mounting locations. Next, we're ready to go ahead and install our side plates. We'll begin over here on the driver's side. We'll be attaching here, here, and these three locations, the side plate will attach to the frame. Now to attach the side plate to the cross members, we'll again be using the half inch by inch and a half hex bolt with a half inch flat washer. We'll then install a half inch lock washer and finally a half inch hex nut. This will be the same hardware at all four locations, two on each side that secure the side plate to the cross members. Next, let's go over the hardware that we'll be using to attach our driver's side side plate to the vehicle's frame. For this center hole here, we'll be using a three quarter inch bolt. This special square washer goes like that. This will then feed from the back side of the frame. We'll then feed this spacer onto the three quarter inch bolt and it'll go in between the vehicle's frame and the side plate. We'll then put a three quarter inch lock washer on followed by a three quarter inch hex nut. We'll go ahead and reach in underneath. With our three quarter inch bolt in place, we'll raise the side plate up, slide our spacer on. We'll then install the three quarter inch lock washer and then the hex nut. Next, let's go over the hardware that we'll be using for the smaller holes are the forward and rear mounting location on the side plates. This will be the same hardware used on both the driver and the passenger side. We'll be using a half inch by inch and a half hex bolt. That'll feed in from the back side. 
I'm gonna be adding a half inch washer, a half inch lock washer, and finally a half inch hex nut. This will be the same at the other three mounting locations. The only difference in hardware between the driver and the passenger side is for the three quarter inch bolt, we'll be using a round three quarter inch washer instead of the square washer. For this location right here, Next, we'll go ahead and tighten and torque to the manufacturer's specification. The six locations that secure the center section to the cross members. Next, we're gonna to need to take a couple measurements to make sure that our hitch is square in the vehicle. If the hitch or the hole in the receiver is not square, some B&W accessories may not work properly. Next, we'll go ahead and tighten down our three quarter inch bolt. We'll then go ahead and tighten down the forward and back bolt securing the side plate. Now that we've got our hardware all tight here, we'll go ahead and torque it down to the manufacturer's specification. We'll repeat the same process over on the passenger side. And the final locations that we need to tighten and torque to the manufacturer's specification are right here and here. That's what attaches the side plate to the cross members. And we'll need to repeat the same process on both the driver and the passenger side. Next, we're gonna need to install the latch pin release handle. We'll go ahead and take the end with the rubber piece on it. We'll feed it through this hole right here. Go up and over the top of the frame, coming out into the driver's side wheel well. We'll then take the handle and go in front of the latch pin, so it'll look like that. To secure it, we'll be using a 5 16 carriage bolt and a 5 16 locking flange nut. We can then go ahead and tighten down the flange nut. Next, we're gonna need to drill some holes to install the U-bolts for the safety chains. We'll be using the two holes closest to the center round receiver tube on both sides. We'll be using a half inch drill bit to drill these holes out. Now that we have our holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and come up here into the bed. We will need to drop the U-bolts down through the two holes. We'll go ahead and install a spring that looks like this. It'll go the larger side on first. We'll then install a lock nut onto the threads. We'll go ahead and repeat this for the other three locations.
Now when tightening down the nut, you want to make sure that you tighten the nut down so that the threads are even with the bottom side of the nut. Next, we'll go ahead and reinstall our exhaust. Next, we're gonna need to install a bracket that helps lower the exhaust down. And here's the reason why. You can see right here on the rear cross member, our exhaust is hitting it. So here's what our bracket looks like. We're gonna need to take the quarter inch carriage bolt, slide it through the bracket like this. I need to slide it in underneath the factory bracket. So it looks like that. We'll then put a locking flange nut onto that quarter inch carriage bolt. Next, we're gonna take a 5 16 carriage bolt. We'll angle the bracket. We'll go through the hole right here and come back through the bottom bracket like that. We'll then install a locking flange nut onto this one as well. Next, we'll come back into the wheel well. We're gonna to need to install this spacer that looks like this behind these two set of holes. Now to attach the bracket to the frame, we'll be using a 5 16 carriage bolt and a 5 16 locking flange nut. This will be the same hardware for both holes. Now with the two carriage bolts in place, go ahead and put both of the locking flange nuts on and then we can tighten down all the hardware. Now with our bracket installed to lower the exhaust down, you'll see now that we have clearance between the exhaust pipe and the rear cross member of the hitch. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall both of the rear wheels, as well as put the spare tire back up into position. And that'll do it for the installation of the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for B&W Companion fifth wheel trailer hitches, part number BWGNRK1111-5W on our 2011 Ford F350 Super Duty.